Well, thank you. Thank you very much for an absolutely fantastic uh, presentation. I, I, I've actually all, all three today have been great. I'll be doing a Facebook post later today with that uh, with that link for the checkcherry.com slash deal slash pivot expo, um, along with the pick pick social and um, as well as the epic print deals. Um, I, like I said, thank you very much for uh, for sharing all your information and uh, much appreciated. And thanks for putting this on, Robin. I appreciate it. Let me go over here. I guess I got a phone. I'm all going right. to. Uh, I am going to introduce. Uh, and thanks again, Judd. Big round of applause. And I'm going to introduce our uh, next speaker now. So I, I talked a little bit uh, about an hour and something ago when we had a few minutes between the last two sessions. Uh, I talked a little bit about Wayne. Um, Wayne is well known in Vegas as Mr. Magic, and he runs a number of businesses. Uh, one of which, actually, when when we were talking about the yard cards, um, he actually has something called the Magic Marquee. Uh, let me just uh, so Wayne actually has something called the Magic Marquee, uh, which he was showing at Photo Booth Expo and. I believe he sold uh, to a major casino in Vegas, but I, I won't. I, if he wants to tell you the details on that, he can. But I don't know if the deal uh, that was just before COVID hit. Um, he also, we originally got in touch uh, with one another in uh, January, and he was uh, telling me about his uh, his photo booth in a van, which I, I believe is, he called Little Sammy, right? That's correct. And um, so. Wayne's been pivoting from a number of things. Like I said, he was pivoting from the photo booth in the van to the marquee signs. And uh, like like all of us, uh, he's a serial entrepreneur. Okay, and I'm, I'm proud of being a serial entre entrepreneur. He's proud. I think most of us are proud and wouldn't have it any other way. And he has really, he's had a fascinating story as a prominent entertainer, both in Vegas and I guess you're originally in Pennsylvania, right? Uh, right. I'm back a few years, and um, I, I think he's got some words of wisdom and some guidance for us that we should all listen to. And uh, let me, and plus, at the end, make sure you tell him. Like I said, your your signs are amazing. So at the at the end, make sure you tell him a little bit a little bit about your signs on that as well. So, so ladies and gentlemen, big virtual round of applause once again for. Wayne, Mr. Magic. And with that, welcome to Las Vegas, ladies and gentlemen. Greetings. Rob, thank you for that wonderful introduction. I haven't had an introduction that good since the introducer got sick and I had to introduce myself. I just, I just uh, wish I was in Vegas. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I agree. Um, I might be a little bit improficient with switching back to my slides or whatever, so I'm going to sort of maybe do a little bit of the old-fashioned way. Um, and uh, But one, one of the things that I was able to glean from having had the benefit and pleasure of sitting through the first three uh, wonderful speakers is – um, it is a relaxed atmosphere, not a lot of pressure, and we're all basically here to share. And I learned a lot from these first three presentations. Uh, matter of fact, I was fearing that if Judd went any further, I might not even have anything to introduce. But no, he, he touched on a lot of good things, things that um, I had made reference to. Um, one of the things that uh, came to mind when Rob asked me to put this together and I sat down and put pen to paper and started uh, coming up with some things is, boy, it sure would have been nice to get this stuff out there five, six, seven, eight months ago. Um, but better late than never. And um, what I'm going to do is um, just go through what I call five fives. I made up five lists of uh, topics that I think will be helpful. Now, I'm sure that you all 
know 99% of these things. But sometimes even though we know an answer or have thought of something, it's nice to have some validation or reminder that mm, maybe that that is a good way to go. Um, I don't know all the answers. Matter of fact, I'm not even sure I know one answer. Uh, most of the things that I have on my list are things that I've tried and succeeded with or things that I'm still perhaps going to try. I really don't have anything here that I've tried and has failed but that would not have been a bad thing either because just because I failed at it doesn't mean that you would fail at it. So with that being said, Rob, help me out here. For I'm going to try to switch over and show uh, a picture here. I guess if I go to present. Present, yeah. There's, uh, yeah. there's Sammy. And um, Sammy is a Subaru Sandbar that is more or less a Volkswagen look like it's got a Volkswagen logo on top and such. And, um, Sammy is something that I did not buy to be a photo booth, but uh, I just bought it because it was cute, adorable, and I loved it. And there you see Sammy saying, if my friends at the factory could only see me now, I'm going to Las Vegas to the photo booth expo. I, I actually it, can't, I can't see it, unfortunately. You can't see it? No, no, no pictures. Yeah, can't see pictures. Mm, it's up on my screen. Why Why do you think you can't see it? Hit uh, hit present on the right side. And then share hit what, sir? Hit what? Um, hit present on the right side of the... Um, yeah. And then... Right. And then and then hit your entire screen or applic right there. Or... I'm hitting entire screen. Um, application window. You still can't see that? No, nothing's coming up. You should have a share button once you turn on present. Presenting on the right hand side, hit the presenting button. You should have a share, share. Oh, button. yeah, okay. right. I'm so sorry. I'll try it one more time. If it doesn't come, then just tell us about it. <laughs> All right, we can share the pictures later. Yeah, we'll share the pictures later. Um, well, um, let's see where we were here. Um, you know, the, the, there was, I don't know how many people are on this uh, pivot seminar. Um, let's say for sake of argument, there's 727 and a half. Um, th that means there's 727 different people here from all situations, all different walks of life. We have part-timers, full-timers. We have people that just because COVID hit and um, they had to cut back on the business, it wasn't a big deal. It just meant more free time. There's other people, it was a big deal. There's people that were highly leveraged and maybe had a lot of equipment that was, um, let me get this up here, that was financed, et cetera. Um, but, um, Again, nonetheless, we're all in this together, and um, there's going to be something in one of these seminars from one of these great speakers that's going to help us. So um, with that being said, um, I'm going to go to my presentation here. Can you see that, Rob? That, that, that's actually a good way of doing it. That <laughs> okay. So this is called Five Fives. And the first group of five fives I came up with was um, to sell off obsolete or unused anything. And by anything, what I mean there is it just doesn't have to be your business's equipment. It, maybe at one time. And one of the things I was going to bring up at the beginning here is I've been pivoting all my life. And I know most of us have. Um, you just switch from thing to thing to thing. Um, 
Um, so if you, you might have been in the landscape business. In my case, I sold off lots and lots of magic equipment. I sort of just made the decision that, <coughs> excuse me, when I go, the kids already warned me. Dad, right from the funeral parlor, we're calling 1-800-GOT-JUNK. So you might as well get rid, rid of anything you're, you don't want or aren't using right now. So think about raising some cash, getting yourself a little bit of a cushion by selling off unused anything. The other thing here is stay relevant. And relevant to me means visible. Um, it means staying out there, talking to people, and maybe writing articles. A real good way of um, staying relevant uh, is to do charity work and uh, to set up a photo booth or whatever it is you're doing and do it for charity. Um, so relevant, again, another syn synonym might be meaningful, stay meaningful. Obviously, bullet number three here, stay healthy. And this has to do with not only COVID, but other non-COVID uh, situations. Um I personally found myself in a situation where I was ignoring something because I was afraid to know the results. I was afraid to go to the hospital because it was just full of nothing but COVID patients, et cetera, until I just couldn't ignore it anymore. And I was really, really glad that I went because things that you know are never as bad as what you imagine and putting things off isn't going to help anybody or anything. So if there's one person out there, um, I think the night before I went to the hospital, a doctor friend of mine said, Wayne, the cemetery is full of people who said, it'll get better. It'll go away. So please stay healthy. Um, next bullet point is to check with your accountant for uh, business loss and tax rules. Uh, I don't think there's anyone that's going to finish this year with any type of revenue that doesn't have a large amount of offsetting uh, expenses. You're still maybe paying the same amount of money for your storage or uh, your your health or rental services or different things, whether you had one gig or 100 gigs. So please don't forget to make sure you have all that stuff accounted for. And the law last here is to be COVID knowledgeable and friendly slash compliant. For instance, in the case of the photo booth business, there was a lot of talk about not using props. Um, so there's a lot of common sense things and a lot of regulated things you can do to be COVID compliant. No one wants to inadvertently otherwise or otherwise get on the wrong side of a venue if someone claims that your booth or your business wasn't properly compliant. Okay. The next thing is five things not to do ever. And one is panic. Again, it might be too late for this. Could have been helpful six, seven, eight months ago. Um, but just maintain your composure Sit down, think of some plans, and we've already seen today that thinking out of the box, in this case, the photo box, um, definitely goes a long way. My recommendation, and again, what I'm doing here is I'm taking off my photo booth hat, my magician hat, et cetera, and just putting on my business consulting slash common sense hat. The next suggestion is don't tank your prices. In other words, um, it's it'd be real easy just to say, I'd rather have a hundred bucks for this thing than to have it sit in the garage or have zero. Um, one way of getting um, business, knowing that you have to reduce prices is, so you don't want to destroy your base. And if your base is whatever, $200 an hour, always maintain your base. So give someone a full base proposal but then you can give them a discount. You can give them a coupon because you don't want to destroy your base. You don't want to get into a pricing war. The next thing you don't want to do is nothing. Obviously, just sitting around, 
And I don't think there's anyone here that's doing that because if the very fact, the virtue that you are on this call means you're doing something. So that's um, without saying. The next thing is don't prematurely or irreversibly get out of business. Irreversibly being you just sold everything and you said, the heck with it. This is not for me. If you could possibly pause it while you're pivoting, it's going to come back. Um, the last thing is, again, don't ignore COVID safety. And if nothing else, if nothing else, this is for yourself and your workers and your family. Okay, the next group of fives, this is giving five givens. We all know there is not an industry or a business that is going to come back the same as before. In some cases, it might come back better, stronger, but it's going to come back different. Some businesses, unfortunately, will never come back. I don't think our businesses are one of them. The next thing is photo booths obviously are not dead. They might be comatose. They might be in a uh, state of suspension but or slow down, but they're not dead. Um, next thing, if you pretend that COVID factor doesn't exist, you may be pretend in a few months that you are still in business. Number four, you are going to have to work more for the same or even less. And the last group of five here is bigger, fancier, higher tech is not necessarily better or necessary at this time. You know, there's all kinds of new things coming down, shiny objects, and um, this might not be the time to um, put all your eggs in a new technology business. But then again, what do I know? It might be. It might, it might be a good time if you have the discretionary cash to say, hey, I think I want to play around with that new 3D photo booth or whatever. These are just suggestions. Five other related things to try. Again, these are just suggestions. These are things that I have tried. One is pay per pick. Pay per pick is a business model that I never was fond of, that we never subscribed to. And that's basically setting your photo booth up at a uh, carnival or fair or something like that and charging X dollars per picture. I didn't want that. I didn't like that. I wanted to get paid X hundred dollars to stand there and take as many pictures as we possibly could. Wasn't going to huckster pictures. Um, but it, it, again, any port in a storm. Second bullet is um, to talk to catering halls, wedding planners, and form some type of partnership. It doesn't necessarily have to mean or be a, a formal partnership, uh, an on paper legal partnership, but it could be a, hey, listen, you do this, you find these people, you know these people. I also find people we can work with each other. Um, part, uh, partnerships with DJs is another one. DJs are really, really, really well connected. Um, so they're good people to know. Number four, um, to basically turn yourself into being a photo booth representative or a broker or a general contractor. Um, if there's four or five, six photo booth companies in your area, why not get to know them? know what the prices are, what they offer, and uh, you can basically sub out work to them. And uh, again, it's all part of working together. Then lastly here, we have um, to be a vertical market expert. By vertical market, I mean being a specialist in something that oh, might be um, holiday mini sessions. Like I've rented my um, little Sammy mini bus out to photographers for their photo sessions. Or uh, it's just a particular niche 
that you yourself say, I know everything about this, it, whether it be weddings or bar mitzvahs or whatever. Um, and just because you bill yourself as a vertical market expert, it's just another feather in your cap. It doesn't mean you're abandoning your other expertises. Lastly, I have five um, sayings, mantras, quotes that I subscribe to on a regular basis. One, and you could probably tell by reading these, I have some project management in my background. One, a good plan today is better than a perfect plan tomorrow. In other words, we, we don't want to fall into analysis paralysis and um, just be trying to think of what to do and how to do it and think. And But sometimes you just got to do it. Just push the button and do it. That's a good plan today. Number two, failing to plan is planning to fail. Number three, inspect what you expect. If you're, especially if you're delegating and have um, employees, workers, family that you've asked to do certain things, follow up on it, see how they're making out on it. Inspect what you expect. Number four, it takes luck, but coincidentally, we've all discovered that hard work makes luck. The harder I work, the luckier I get. And lastly, this was my father's quote. And it was one of those things, you know, you're a kid and your parents say things and you have no idea what exactly it means. And it hits you later on in life. But one of his quotes was, the difference between a professional, he was, he was a magician, the difference between a professional and an amateur is the length of the pauses. And what he was trying to get through to me there was, as a magician, when you make a mistake, you don't give an oh shucks, you don't get mad at yourself, you don't shake your head, you don't, you just continue on. And that length of that pause, because you're a professional, it's like an ice skater falling and getting up and you don't even realize that they just fell because the length of the pause was so minuscule. So um, now, unfortunately, we don't have the picture, but we'll get them out. You'll see them. Um, let me see if I can get this here. Um, it's amazing sometimes what causes or what generates the idea to pivot in a certain area. Um, Rob, how can I get this picture up here? I don't understand why it's not working. I don't know. Actually, I, I, don't know. I, Actually, thought, I, I thought, I thought uh, you're ingenious just to turn your screen around there when it wasn't going. I, I Generally, you hit present, and then uh, you have the three options there, but I don't know why it's not working on yours. All right. Um, well, you'll, you'll get to see the picture. We'll send out copies of these slides and pictures and all kinds of good things. But on little Sammy, on top of little Sammy, if you haven't seen him, her, it's a her. I think we've decided it's a her, Samantha. Um, and the word Sammy comes from, uh, originally it was a Subaru Sambar. It was a limited uh, edition vehicle that was produced in Japan. And, um, but anyway, um, I needed a sign to put on top that says photos. We've all seen that on different VW buses, etc. So I found these really, really nice letters and being a carpenter, a designer, an electrician, talk about pivoting, right? Um, there was one way back when known as Y2K, I was running multi-million dollar computer save the world uh, projects. And uh, January 2nd, after 2000, I was remodeling houses because that just died. It died. It wasn't even coming back. But so I made this sign and I figured, hey, you know, I enjoyed making that and I'm getting some compliments on it. And thanks to Rob, um, I was able to display at the uh, PBX and the, the um, response to the sign was just uh, incredible. So the next day, second day of the photo show, I brought, that was a horizontal one. I brought a vertical one, a freestanding vertical one. 
And then I brought one I made for somebody else. And before I know it, I was getting orders for these signs. And um, typically, they're 12-inch letters. I made some small or some bigger. And luckily for me, there were two gentlemen there from the Venetian who were opening um, a new high-end store in the Venetian casino. Um, and they were buying a photo booth. The reason they were at the show is they were buying a, a photo booth to put in their store. And they were asking me about the signs. And I like, mm, I don't know. I, <laughs> so uh, we got to talking. And, you know, one, one of the things, we have a little bit of time, right, Rob? Yeah. Um, one, one of the things my son and I share is we, I basically got my start doing uh, a lot of work for the Philadelphia Eagles way back when. And I, I was taking my son to meetings with me when we were 12, 13. He was 12, 13 years old. And one of the things he learned from me, and this burnt me a few times, and I'm sure we've all sort of done this, was I never said no. If they ask for something, guess what? We have it. We can do it. And we were at one particular meeting, and um, the owner of the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, Mr. Laurie, was having a birthday party for his son and he wanted a, he wanted a pony and he wanted a Western wagon to pull the pony. And he wanted fake cowboys and Indians to have a fake battle. He wanted this whole Western theme scenario. And I said, Mr. Lori, no problem. We got you covered. And we walked out into the hallway and my little 12 year old son tapped me on the shoulder and said, dad, do we have a pony? But like, no, but we will by next month. We will. So um, basically, you just always say, yeah, we can do that. So when the Venetian guy said, we need signs that I will go up on the wall and we need signs that will do this. And we and we only need about 10 signs all together. And oh, yeah, we need them installed and we need a, no problem. Do you need a pony, too? Because I got a pony. And um I, I think we're all sort of doing that or have done that. And um, so that's pretty much it for the formal presentation, uh, Rob. Um, there's one other item that I had, and you'll see in your pictures, that um, I brought down to the PBX with me. And that's uh, somebody that I call Pat. His name's Pat. First name's Pat. Last name's Pending. Pat N. Pending. And... Um, Pack was developed because I had a bride who said, I don't want this big, ugly, modern, metalish wood curtain photo booth in the lobby of my wedding. I want some, this is a, a vintage wedding. I want something a little classier. So I designed a, um, remember the old fashioned photo photographer with the hood over him and old fashioned camera. And inside the old fashioned camera was, the, the camera and uh, I've since done one where it holds an iPad on the front and the printer is underneath his tripod. So basically it looks 90 some percent more of a vintage photographer than um, a, a photo booth. And uh, so I brought Pat with me on the second or third day. Um, and I got a lot of good feedback on that and uh, a lot of interest in that. So, Within days, I found myself creating things and selling things that if I would have planned it, it never could have or would have worked. Um, so, Rob, without any further whatever, um, questions, comments? I think, I think your biggest questions there. I don't know. Am I coming in uh, loud and clear or no? I can hear you. Yep. Okay, good. Um, I seem to be getting some kind of a feedback. I have no idea why, but as long as as long as you can hear and as long as they can hear, we're good. Um, your biggest questions seem to be that people want to see the signs and they want to see Sammy, which I, I realized we were trying to do. Um, is there any way you can put it on your screen and then turn it around like you did with your um, with your panels? Yeah, give me a, give me a second. Yes. I can do that. I can do that. And I also oh. have a pony. So, 
So Madison said, I'm going to add a pony to my package proposals. <laughs> ah, go, Madison. <laughs> Hi, Madison. Oh, man. What is, okay, just some comments here. Um, awesome presenter, very personable and interesting. Love it. Very wise. Wayne reminds me of all the best parts of Fred Willard and Walter Matthau. Thank you for your charisma <laughs> and wisdom. And then fly, eagles, fly. <laughs> oh, where is here? That's funny. If, if we could have figured out how to get your uh, pictures up on the screen, it would have been absolutely perfect. So. <laughs> we will. We will. Just give me a second here. So when, once you have that, I was actually I'm going to ask you a few questions because you're one of my boots on the ground in Vegas, which I used to, like I said, I spent the better part of January, February and March uh, in Vegas and area. And I really miss, um, I, I haven't, I've been stuck here in Canada now since, uh, since the end of March. And uh, I, I know we've talked a little bit about how things are going on, I guess on the weekends, there's a few people at the casinos, but through the week, there's still absolutely no conventions, and ho hopefully that'll turn out. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely uh, hit a different dynamic here, um, and uh, we're hoping that'll change. It, it'll definitely change. It's going to 100% going to change. Uh, Vegas has too many roots and is too um, well-established just to fall into oblivion. Okay. Um, here, here is, um, there, there's, there's one sign that I made for, um, the Venetian on top of one of their gondolas. So one of the one of the questions people had was, how did you price the signs for the Venetian? Can you see those pictures there? Yeah, actually, I'm gonna. I, I think I've got that picture that you sent it to me back in uh, February or something like that. There's little Sammy. There's an Elvis sort of lookalike impersonator um, stopping by. One of the things about Sammy, first of all, it's, a, it's two photo booths in one because people like getting their picture taken in the front of it like a hippie booth. And then inside on the sides here is the actual photo booth. And in the back is the printer. There's one of the signs there. Um, uh, to answer the question about the um, pricing, it was, it was interesting because... Um, I didn't have a whole lot of history on how to do it. And with so many things, um, you sit down and you say, okay, it's going to, material is going to cost me this amount, but I really don't know how long it's going to take me. I've only made two or three or four signs. So I did a best guess estimate. And then I did something my father taught me is sort of come up with a price and then he always said double it, but I just couldn't double it. So I just sort of swagged it. And uh, luckily, I got pretty, pretty lucky. Uh, didn't lose any money on it. There's, um, can you see him? That's Pat there. Inside here is the um, camera. Um, down here is the printer and the um, computer hidden behind old-fashioned luggage. The LED light works. Um one I did recently is on the front here. Uh, he was an iPad uh, booth. So on the front here was the iPad. Um, so that's that's him. Um, I've done, there's a USA sign. There's a vertical um, standalone photos sign. Here's uh, a couple signs I did for the Venetian. Their, their, their store is called Hashtag Vegas. So all their signs began with hashtag something. Um, this goes out to weddings a lot. Um, there's the bar equipment section. There's more photos. Um, there's one I did for Penn and Teller. Um, th these were two foot uh, numbers, the 50 for a 50th birthday. Generic signs. 
Um, and one of my goals had we had um, had PBX twenty twenty one was to have a whole booth um, dedicated to to the signs because I never thought they would go over that big, but um, it was a it was a big hit. Um, so that's how I priced them. I sort of swagged it, and then I've made some modifications since then. Um, and I've learned a lot since then too, and I've gotten better also at them. You know, initially, sometimes I think when you're a first timer at something, you don't mind taking a little bit of a loss or even a little bit of break even because that's part of the learning process. Then you know the next time you do it, how to how to tune it up. Any other questions, Rob? Um, actually, I was going through a couple of other things in there, but I did have. <laughs> I guess one of the one of and you mentioned it in your um, your five fives and all of that, but it's like sometimes you never know exactly what's going to be the big hit, do you? It's like when we were talking never. originally about Photo Booth Expo, uh, we were both all excited that you're going to be displaying Little Sammy and all that, and and that's you know like that's all great and everything. It's like I it's just a beautiful car, a beautiful van, but uh, who knew that you know who knew the big hit would be. Uh, you know, all of your marquee signs and all of that, you know? Yeah. So, you, you, just, you just have to be prepared to think on your feet and to be able to find a pony. Um, <laughs> what I, got, I must tell you one other quick little story about that. Another brilliant idea I came up with was we were doing a lot of work for uh, not only the Eagles, but the Philadelphia Soul Arena football. And I came up with this brilliant idea of having – football helmets on remote control cars. So guys, they were always looking for different types of entertainment. So guys could stand there on the, on the edge of this little arena and, and with the remote controls and battle each other with the helmets and try to score with a football and stuff. And I just thought it was the coolest, neatest idea. And I pitched it to the Eagles. I pitched it to the Philadelphia Soul Arena football for years, two, three, four years. Finally, we go to a meeting and they say, remember those uh, remote control helmets you, you were talking about? Yeah, yeah, I remember them. We want them. We have, we have a perfect place for them. And again, we walked out of the meeting and my son said, Dad, do we really have them? And I got to thinking, I had proposed them for so long. I had lied for so long about having them. It took me a couple of minutes to realize we really didn't even have them. <laughs> so now I had to put put the, my money where my mouth was and uh, make some remote control helmets. So sometimes you have to be careful, but um, oh, what the heck? It all comes out in the end, right? We, Anything we else? Did, uh, we, did, uh, we had one question yeah, come up. Um, just a definition question. What what does it mean to swag it? As in swag the price? Oh, swag! Swag is an acronym for silly, wild ass guess. Okay, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> okay. Um, let me take a look here because I've been. Where are we here? Uh, question and answer. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully, like I said, we're going to be having the next uh, photo booth expo in uh, February, 2022. I, up until about a month ago, I was still hoping that it might be possible to have it in 2021, but just everything, you know, especially with the, the rates going up like crazy and all of that. And uh, about a week after I announced that uh, it was going to be in 2022, um, they, even Nevada, um, the governor announced that meetings were now going to be restricted for from the middle of September. They allowed uh, 250 people in any one room at any one time, as long as they're always separated by six feet and all of that. And that was just uh, a week or two ago. That was reduced to 50. So now you, you made the right decision, Rob, definitely made the right decision, the safe decision, the prudent decision. Um, no, I, I, I commend you for that. But I, I am hoping we were last in the last hour, we saw some charts that say, you know, things are going to go up and 
once you know hopefully hopefully at some point the floodgates will open and we'll all be back to making money and you know <laughs> i guess some, some of us are doing quite fine right now anyway but um you know it'll uh it like i said people don't people sometimes don't know what they miss till they miss it you know and i i think it was pretty much we all assumed that there would never be a time that we'd always have to be six feet apart and social distancing and, you know, for any amount of time, you know, and for this to even, even photo booth expo in February. I mean, I was, yeah, I'd read about all this stuff in the newspapers and all that, but I still thought it was going to be more like SARS in 2003. And I thought it was going to be more like, uh, you know, Ebola in 2014 that was limited to a small area and contained, but I, that's not what happened. Well, that's a good, uh, especially when we have the USA with the uh, the U in red, the uh, S in white, and the A in blue. So. Right. Yeah, I can do different color letters. Um, these are examples of the six inchers. These are twelve inchers, and th these are two feet. And I also uh, am now getting into four footers. Um, you know, for like love, for weddings and such. Um, so I, I enjoy making them. I really do. Um, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. I wouldn't be doing it. And I think that's an important factor too, that whatever you pivot into, if you enjoy doing it, um, it, 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 it probably helps a whole lot. Like I could really tell by the yard, uh, sign ladies that they were really into it. They were definitely a hundred percent proud and it was fun setting up a, a display on someone's lawn and such. It's, it seems like a real fun business. Exactly. Actually, when, one of the questions that came in was uh, uh, one of the questions that came in for their first hour there was, uh, "Can do you have light up ones?" And then, and I was thinking, I think that's Wayne Simmons. He actually does have. I mean, they they, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't necessarily be. Um, these are more indoor lights, right? But. Uh, uh, it's like, yeah, his, his look, you know, they light up yeah. and you can see them from a distance and I can see why the Venetian would be, you know, they saw those and said, yeah, we got to, uh, <laughs> we, we got to decorate our casino or the store in the casino with that, you know? So, so. Yeah, definitely one with their motif of, of glitter, glitz, glitz Wayne, and glitter. Wayne, we have a, we have a question. Somebody wanted to know how they could purchase uh, one of these signs or some of these letters, do you have them on a website? Is there a way to, to get in touch with you to, to order some? Well, yeah. Um, first of all, it's the, the, the uh, email is Wayne, W-A-Y-N-E, and I'm sure Rob has this on one of his handouts or postings or whatever, and we'll be sending out these slides and pictures and such. Um, but it's Wayne, W-A-Y-N-E, at MR is in Mr. MR Magic Family dot com. And um, right now, I just have not been sa savvy enough or um, aggressive enough to have a website and such. I mean, I'm, I got on a couple pages like Shopify or Etsy or things like that. Um, and um, yeah, just uh, send, shoot me an email. We'll talk about what you need. And um you know, I have shipping down to a science. Say they're all even, even the ones that are longer than four feet, they fold in half. Um, so, I'd be happy to talk to you about it. They're um, they're even battery operated. So, if you have a situation where you can't plug in um, batteries, two D cells will power these things for days, twenty four hours a day. It's amazing the the low power consumption. Or you can uh, plug them in. So what, one thing I wanted to brainstorm, we've got about uh, 20 minutes here before the, uh, before the final session of the day. Um, and I wanted to open this up to the floor as well, but definitely get your input, Wayne. Um, so I, I think I've been super thrilled with the quality so far of the, the first four presenters, including yourself. But I, I'm thinking, what, how, would it, how do you think it might work if we actually did a just uh, a pivot expo once every just one hour once every uh two weeks like either monthly or bi-weekly or something like that where we all get together probably be on zoom and 
just discuss, you know, maybe have a have a speaker of the week to speak for 10 or 20 minutes and then just open the floor up to everybody in the community that feels they have something to say that, uh, you know, would like to offer their opinions on stuff. Um, you know, do, do you think that's something that might um, we're, we're going to have a formal online expo in February and October, but just for everybody to be able to, I think we have a nice community here for everybody to be able to just get together once every couple of weeks or once a month um, to discuss, you know, from different corners of the world and uh, sort of keep us together while we're apart. You know, I don't know. What... I don't see, I don't see how that can be a bad idea, Rob. That's wonderful. But uh, I mean, I've been the only, I think my big thing here is it's hard always to, we got we have about 15 we had 15 presentations all together but it does make for long days i think it would actually be better to um you know to have an hour here and an hour there and uh because i a lot of times and i've gone to plenty of these online um i've gone, I've gone to plenty of these online um expos and sometimes it is a long day. You don't necessarily you don't want to be sitting in front of your computer for the entire time. And there, like I said, the difference between that and the live expo. At the live expo, you actually get to meet the people. Like when you're talking about your signs, and when you're talking about uh, when you're talking about Sammy, it's like it's right there for you to see. You know, you don't have to do it through pictures and all of that. And people can actually meet you in person. And so I, like I said, I can't wait for 2022, but. You know, if if anybody's got any input in terms of what we should be, in addition to online expos in the meantime and things like that, uh, just let me know. And I'm open to any and all input and um, anything that's got a reasonable idea of succeeding. Um, I'm definitely be going like that. So, oh, here we, somebody said, um, I like 90 minutes, 30 to 45 minute presentation followed by 45 minute question and answer and all of that. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. An hour and a half might be good. Like I said, it's um, I'd vote for evenings or late afternoons. So maybe yeah. The only the only difference there um, is once again uh, when we have people from all over the world. There's 24 time zones, and I know there's some uh, some people you know for whom it's four o'clock in the morning or something right now. But the majority of the people are between Eastern, you know, the, the four U.S. and Canadian time zones and all that. So it probably covers 80, 80, 85 percent of people anyway. But, uh, but anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll be going through all of these. Um, and we, we still have, uh, we have another great presentation coming up. And we also uh, have two more days. So uh, I really want all the reviews, want to know what everybody thinks of the platform, obviously. Um, Obviously, it didn't go perfectly in term, you know, from my end, from the technical end, because I'm still learning this. But uh, hopefully, it went it, it went uh, smooth enough for uh, for people to have gotten a lot. And I can't thank the presenters enough. Um, just I, I myself have learned a lot, and I you were truly engaging with everybody. And I and uh, thank you, and, and Wayne, thank you very much. My pleasure, sir. And I will, like I said, later later tonight, um, or worst worst case scenario, first thing tomorrow morning, I will be sort of posting a recap. So if you can send me all of the links and everything uh, for how to for how people can get a hold of you with, with regards to the signs, uh, with regards to little Sammy or anything else that you mentioned, then I'll make I'll make sure that I post that in there. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to check if, uh, did you have anything else you want to, you, you mentioned at one point uh, your son might be coming in. Did, did uh, he, you have anything from his end? I'm not, I'm, not sure if, I'm not sure if he joined or not, Rob. Oh, okay. If not, you'll have to catch it on uh, YouTube. <laughs> well, that's, that's the one thing, like I said, that this is being recorded. I didn't want to, I had a number of people asking me whether they could see it later and all of that. But uh, I, I think all four <laughs> So far, all four presentations have been good enough that if I can download, and I know uh, Piyush from uh, 10 Times was on here earlier uh, monitoring to make sure that, you know, technically things were going fine with their, with their platform, which it seems to be. Um, but uh, it, it's being, the, the whole the whole five hours is being recorded. And, 
uh, with the permission of the speakers, I may very well break it up and, uh, you know, and, and throw it on YouTube or something like that for, for people to share. Because I think there's been a lot of good, uh, there, there's been Rob, a lot of good uh, content in here today. So, Rob, can I, throw, can I interject one last minute little um, plug commercial in there, please? Yes, please. Um, if there's someone out there who has an interest in using Little Sammy in their business, and that means running it, um, booking it, et cetera, and basically um, making me the um, behind the scenes uh, silent partner to it, um, I would be willing to entertain that. I'm getting to a point in my life uh, where, um, you know, I don't want to be running out seven days a week or five or three or four days a week. I want someone else to be able to, to use this, make money with it. And, um, and I've had a number of offers to purchase it. And there's a couple of other deals in the works locally here, um, in Las Vegas, but, um, because of the virus, nothing's been signed, sealed or delivered yet. So I'm open for any and all ideas and offers of how little Sammy can start making some money or making money as soon as possible with someone else doing uh, the bulk of the hands-on work. So let me know, please. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I was really impressed when the, the first time you showed me the van, it's like fantastic van and you're, and then your sign with the photos on top. It's just, it's the entire package there. And right back here, I didn't point out right here on both sides, on the sides and in the back, there are large TVs, so they can have rolling slideshows, advertisement, or you can see on the TVs what's being done inside, you know, people getting their picture taken. There's a number of things you can do with the three TVs. Um, so it's, it's, it's high tech and it's very uh, well designed. Thank you. Hey, Rob, um, somebody asked if you would um, just run down the lineup of speakers real quick for tomorrow. I will. But before I do that, I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, Martin Shkarais, uh from Riga, Latvia. So it's right. He would just he noted that uh, I was right about the different time zones in the world that uh, it's actually quarter to twelve midnight right right now. But I recognize the name because my parents are Latvian and uh, I've been to Latvia a few times now, and uh, it's great to uh, great to have somebody uh, in our midst here from Riga, Latvia. So welcome. And I uh, hope to see you at the next expo as well. So in a uh, year and a bit, so year and three months, I guess. Now. But uh, anyway, we were going to go. So uh, next, everybody stick around because uh, Jindo is next. And we're just going to get them up on the screen um, shortly. I, think, I guess we have about 10 more minutes before their presentation starts. Um, but uh, let me run through. I'll run through exactly who's going to be speaking when tomorrow. And uh, so tomorrow, uh, first first person up is Andy Starr, along with a few of his associates. Uh, their, their pivot is, and I guess I've been doing it before COVID as well, but uh, memory videos for people. Uh, Wally Carnes from Darkroom, he's second up. Then Patrick Reif from Pixelated. At 4 p.m., we're going to have a panel from different parts of the world. Uh, Stephen Honeyball, Dennis, Dennis Marantet, Danny Brewer, and Chuck Eckert. 5 p.m., Ryan Berger. Uh, Wednesday uh, at 1, p so 1, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Uh, Standard Time, Jordan St. Jacques. 2 p.m., Bill Varenkamp. 3 p.m., Dr. Drax, Casey Kokarus, and Bob Vartanian. 4 p.m. Alex Rays and 5 p.m. Josh Pather. And I actually had a few people that we couldn't uh, in the last week that got in contact with me and a couple that got in contact with me earlier that um, we kind of didn't follow up. But uh, I am seriously looking at setting up at least a monthly, if not biweekly, um, Pivot Expo chat, which will just it'll be free for all. Uh, we'll, we'll make it uh, we'll make it password protected because I. I'm a member of the National Association of Consumer Shows, and they kind of did the same thing. They had every couple of weeks or uh, some, basically all the people that run shows and how, how COVID was affecting them and all of that. And one time they got hacked. 
um, which is actually kind of funny and sad at the same time, but the, the, uh, we de it definitely will be password protected, but there'll be no charge. And I'm hoping it's a good way for us as a community to, um, to uh, you know, to interact all with one another. Um, Madison said, do, do not miss Josh Pather. So he's, he's going to be the grand finale there on Wednesday. So that's your schedule. Uh, like I said, I will try to do a much better job in the future. Of, I did post them, but actually having them... Uh, so far, I'm re relative, unless I hear it different, I'm relatively happy with the platform here. So um, I'll be a lot better in terms of being able to post uh, the schedules and things like that for the future ones. Uh, it does look like, uh, okay, I'm gonna, first I'm going to say thank you again to Wayne, Mr. Magic. Uh, just a very inspiring presentation. I'm sure a lot of people enjoyed that. And uh, it looks like... Um, uh, Sean and Josh from Jindo are ready, so I just got to figure out, uh, I'm going to get them on the screen here. It'll just take me a minute or two. And once again, a big round of applause for uh, Wayne, Mr. Magic Simmons. Thank you. Thank you.